Philly won the bench points by a lot. Batum got double figures, Heald got double figures, and you lost. And Embiid had a good scoring game, he hit his over, and you lost. Why'd you lose? Well, once again, no one to guard Jalen Brunson. Once again, when the game gets tough in the fourth quarter, all these games are close. This is anybody's series, anybody's game, in any in any given game, any team could win. Just because there's no blowouts, the Knicks are going to hang around, the Sixers are good enough to be in any game, but the difference is that when it gets to clutch time, when you get the high-pressure possessions, that number 11 on New York, he just knows what to do with it. And he's just consistent, and there's no hesitation. He scores the critical baskets. There are moments where he's not running the entire offense, but it's really hard for them to score. And so he has to save them. He has to come in and cook halfway through the fourth quarter, back-to-back triples to give his team a cushion. And he has an exceptional three minutes there in the Knicks mountain. Eight-point lead with 3.30 left. Pretty much energy has been sucked out of the building. The Sixers made a great comeback. They looked like they had it pretty much at halftime and starting the third quarter. It looked like they were just getting their shots easier than the Knicks were. They had settled in. And they can just cruise to the finish line. But you just can't do that against the New York Knicks. Problem with Joel Embiid is there's a mental aspect beyond all the physical stuff throughout the course of a game. He can get his baskets still, even though he's not, obviously he's not fully healthy Joel Embiid, as he never is in the playoff scenario. But Joel, down the stretch of the game, it's like, does he even really want to shoot the basketball? There is a mental component. There is a mental override He's not as aggressive. Like when the, when the game is on the line, it's not he's not thinking like, "Oh, I have to get us a bucket." He does want the ball, but it's not always to shoot it. Remember when he hesitated on that mid-range shot in game 4, I think. He had a wide open mid-range shot with about 35 seconds left. He went for the layup instead and he missed it. That type of thing. He's hesitating. He's just overthinking stuff and you can see it. it it's a difference between him and Jalen Brunson where Brunson is He's just getting to his spot every time. There's no thinking about it. It's just like an instinctual, natural thing. You just get to a point down the stretch of this game where the Knicks are firing on all cylinders. They, they look like they're just a better conditioned team. That's been a constant theme throughout this series. When you get late in a game like this, even though Philly's got arguably more talent. I mean, they've got two stars to your one. The body language, the conditioning, the conditioning. New York is just well-conditioned. They can play the entire game. Their their starters are ready to play the entire game, and and you can't really tell that they're ever tired. They they don't ever look tired. When the fourth quarter comes, when it's winning time, Knicks never look tired. Sixers, they look a little bit dead in the water. Maxie had to save them for them to stay in this series last game, game five. I mean, that's 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 a miracle that happens. In general, the, the Sixers just don't look ready for that moment. MB doesn't look ready for that moment. Brunson is ready for that moment. Say what you want about the Trey Young move. I'm um, jumping up into the defender. Here's my opinion on this. I don't like the motion. Like, this is a move that he does, and he did it twice, and he got two and ones off of it. He's not jumping backwards. First of all, it's this move, him being able to do this move, is a product of the Sixers not being able to guard him. You didn't play good enough defense. You didn't guard him well enough. To keep him in front of you. You're behind him. You're already beat. So if you're encroaching his space. You have to know what he's going to do. That being said. I don't like this as an unnatural move. Like he's patented a lot of moves. Jalen Brunson. That it's not natural basketball. It's not It's it's not pretty to the eyes. It's not what we want to see. In a basketball game. It's not the way basketball should be. Because it's playing to get a foul. But he has. He has patented moves. Around that. Like, I'm going to master this move so that I can get a foul. And it is a foul. I mean, he's he's just smarter than other guys. He's just too crafty with it. But it's not fun to watch. But you can't really you, you can't really blame him. It, com- it all comes back to what I was saying before in my last video about Joel Embiid and, and some of his dirty tactics and flopping and stuff. It's like, you're going to do what it takes to win. If the refs are going to let you get away with something, you're going to do it. You need to win the game. It doesn't matter what anybody on Twitter fucking says. You need to win the game. So who cares what I say? Like, Jalen Brunson's trying to win a basketball game, and it's up to the NBA. All the credit in the world to a guy that's like six feet tall and carrying a team. Legitimately, who's his second option? There isn't one. It's him and a bunch of guys. And an impeccably coached team. But it's the Jalen Brunson show. It's four 40-point games in a row. 
Still not enough people are talking about how good this guy is. He's just not as flashy as Kyrie and Steph Curry, I guess. He doesn't dunk on people like John ja Morant uh, or Anthony Edwards. He just gets the job done. He's just a walking bucket. I don't really understand. Like, wh- how is he not the best? I think he, com- he can compete with Luka for the best point guard in the league title. I don't think Steph Curry can do this. I'm taking Jalen Brunson over 36-year-old Steph Curry easily. And I'm not even thinking about it because this is insane. Uh, we could talk about Tobias Harris too. I mean, this is just... I think pretty much no one is surprised that this happens. This is kind of a long time coming of like a guy that just doesn't go up above and beyond ever. He's going to be on the court. He might shoot it. He's not... He, he doesn't want the moment though. And that's probably the issue with this Philly team. Like... Kelly Oubre has never really played in a, in a series like this, like with this sort of role. Tyrese Maxey, he showed out. He's got everybody's respect. And Joel Embiid, like his reputation is inescapable at this point. If you don't win this series, you know, you're too good of a player to be losing this series this way. And he had a really good game for a while, but I kind of respect his performance. But it's just at the end of the game, he doesn't really want it. He's not closing these games. And that's where these games are won and lost. Every single one of them. You have to close the games. The Knicks consistently are better in the clutch. They execute. And that's what it all comes down to at the end of the day. Because neither of these teams can mount a lead that is significant enough where you don't need clutch time. Clutch time, it happened in like every single game. And one of those games, the Sixers only won because Tyrese Maxey had to turn into T-Mac. I don't know, the Embiid thing, it's the same shit every single year. He's injured, and he underperforms, and he chokes. Every single year, and the team is dysfunctional. It's never only his fault, right? But he's still the main guy. It's still your responsibility. That is the the, the burden of being the best player on your team, of being an MVP. It's the pressure. It's We don't care about all the other stuff. Like, people get hurt. You played a team without Julius Randle. Bojan got hurt during the series. There's something that really does sum up like how these two teams approach each other, approach the game in clutch time in a big moment. So we know that like Josh Hart was getting a million offensive rebounds. There was one play where in this like in the fourth quarter it just kept happening. It's been a problem all series, but on that OG dunk, whoever got the offensive rebound, I don't even remember who it was, but the ball finds OG and it's insane because Everybody on the Sixers was just frozen in place. They were just staring at him. No one was guarding OG. He was wide open for three, thought he was going to take the three, but he just said, no, I'm going to take the dunk, and he got three anyway. This is just like the epitome of what the Sixers are. Like, deer in headlights team, when it matters the most, you're not, you're not, besides Tyrese Maxey's one aberration of clutchness in game five, where was the clutch performances from the Sixers? Where was Embiid when it mattered the most, you know? One of the games you won because Embiid had 50. The other game you won because Tyrese had basically 50. 46 saved you at the end. I know they lost one of those games that were they were up five. In game five, when Maxi put on his magician hat and just went god mode, it's you can't say that the Knicks like fell asleep or they had a lapse really. I mean, there might have been a little bit of choking because they were tired, but it wasn't like they weren't really ready for the moment. Like, these guys are always ready for a given possession, offense or defense. Maxi was just too good. He was hitting tough shots. Do you see what he did? That, that wasn't a defensive breakdown. None of those plays were a defensive breakdown. In game two, you had a bad turnover, and then you proceeded to watch Dante DiVincenzo shoot two wide-open threes. They weren't covered threes. They didn't make him work that hard to steal that game. They stole it, and the Sixers fell asleep and let them. In that Knicks game, it's not like they fell asleep. Like, yeah, the, the guys in Celebrity Row were celebrating and, oh, we were ready to parade the streets and whatever. But on the court, they were still trying to close the game. It was just it was just an unbelievable Tyrese Maxey moment. He said it's really a, a personnel issue because where's your grit? Where is your guy that's going to get everybody on the same page? Like, Joel Embiid is not the leadership figure that's going to help win a championship. He's just not. He's not a lead by example guy at the end of a game, and he's not a leadership type locker room vocal guy either that's going to ins- inspire a team. You do have some work to do as far as, and, and also the forwards on this team suck. Like, Ubre and Harris, especially Tobias Harris, that dude's got to go. I mean, he's out of there. I mean, there's no way they bring him back after this. That would be insane. You're, you are still suffering from not picking Jimmy Butler back up, but 
that's another conversation. And Batum, you got 38-year-old Batum guarding Brunson in, in the clutch in an elimination game. What are you doing? So this team is not ready. They need more stuff. And Embiid is just not the player that a lot of people think he is. In the regular season, he can do it. But this is who he is. He's going to be injured in the playoffs. He's going to be a shell of himself in the playoffs. We know that. And you, and you have to know that as a front office that he can't do it all himself. So you do need another piece. You need a better team. I like some of the, what they've got going on. I think Nick Nurse is great. I think he's probably the best thing they did in the offseason was getting him. It could have been a lot better, you know, if MB didn't get hurt. <laughs> he was on track to win the MVP again. But once again, this is MB. He gets hurt. And it translates to the playoffs and they lose. This is just what happens. So I was talking to a good friend about this series uh, at length last night after the result. He brought up the point about like Joel and Anthony Davis, two guys that like just fall down a lot. And he's like, why are you falling down? How does that make any sense? We've talked about that before. Like, it's like a medical thing. It's like, instead of putting too much pressure on your knees by planting your foot, you just fall down. So Embiid falls down a lot. If you're really tall, why are you falling down all the time? You're bigger than everybody on the court. Why ever fall down? How could that ever be good for your health and staying on the court? Like you're literally falling to the floor and you're big. So you're going to fall hard and, and, and far from, from where your head is. It's like, yeah, I mean, as the team doctors are, or, or someone is telling him to, that he should fall and not put too much pressure on his knees when he has to plant his feet. It's like... Can you possibly do that without falling? Why do you have to fall? Do you really have to do that? I mean, clearly there's an issue with his health, like there always has been. And maybe that's just what it is. I guess that's just the tale as old as time. Some players are just injury prone.